Hello and welcome to Peggy's Plants, coming to you from the Florida Keys. In this video, I share with you how I care for and mount my Raphidophora cryptantha. If you're not familiar with shingling aroids, you may just find that you're missing out. I have several shingling aroids and I have come to really enjoy them. Although they may be kind of difficult to get your hands on at the time of this recording, they're not hard to care for. In their natural habitat, these plants are usually found um, shingling up the trunks of trees. In most houseplant collections, you'll find them mounted to flat boards, which allows you to get the best shingling effect. I have had these mounted on moss poles, and here I have it just mounted on a flat piece of cocoa choir, and I'm actually growing it semi-hydroponically in Lekka pellets. But as you can see, it's outgrown its mount. So what I'm going to do is remount both of my cryptantha um, so that they will continue to get larger leaves. When these plants are not climbing, the leaves tend to get smaller. In its previous mounting, this cryptantha was attached to large bark chips and the roots were just getting developed. I didn't want to disturb the roots, so you'll see that some of the bark chips are still attached. What I'm going to do this time is, since it looks like it has a pretty good root system, I want to clean this up as much as possible and get rid of any dead roots, any um, organic debris that is decomposing, all of that. I just want to detach this plant and clean it up nicely so that I can remount it. Now, this is the second one, and it is also growing in Lekka pellets, and it's just in a plastic cup, as you can see here. If you're interested in seeing how I do Lekka, I have a whole video on that, and I do these no differently than I do any of my other Lekka plants. So as you can see, the roots are doing well. This plant seems to be nice and healthy, but it too has outgrown its mount. So the first step is just removing the plant from its mount. Since this one had wood behind it, it is not attached to the actual cocoa choir mat. So as you can see, it just comes right off. Now what I need to do is clean this plant up and see what the roots look like and check out the condition of this plant. To make it easier to remove the organic matter, I'm going to hose it down with some water to kind of soften things up and make it easier to separate the wood from the roots without ripping out the roots. I want to remove as much of the organic material as possible so that this plant can adhere to its new mount instead of to the stuff that's attached to the roots. I'm taking full advantage of having this plant in the sink. I'm going to go ahead and rinse down the entire plant just to make sure if there's any pest attached to it that they too will be removed. This is a good time for you to go ahead and get a good look at this plant as well. The dark heart-shaped green leaf with the silver veining. Now these are tropical plants so they do well in bright light, high humidity and warm climates and they actually do very well in terrariums. As you can see here the water did a great job of loosening things up and so now I'm just going through I'm going to pick off all loose bark chips and any roots that don't seem to be viable. Since things are about to get a little messy, I decided to move outside to the potting bench. But this is what the plant looks like now. And as you can see, we have um, a considerable root system. These plants don't get huge root balls or anything like that, but the roots look really healthy. The plant looks good. You can see the main part of the stem, the mother plant, which I took a cutting from. And now you see there's a smaller stem off to the side, well, a stem with smaller leaves off to the sides, which is what happens when you take a cutting from these plants. They don't continue to grow from the same area where you took the cutting. They start a whole new stem. And here's just another look at the markings on Arafidophora cryptantha. 
And you can also see where the mother plant has the larger leaves. And then you can see the offshoot um, that came about after a cutting was taken from, taken from the mother plant. And here's another look at the mother plant and the offshoot from the back. And where you see these little dots along the stem, those are all places where this stem can potentially grow roots, which will attach to the mount. You can be very flexible in what you choose to mount your um, shingling plants on. These plants will attach to buildings, to rocks, to wood, to trees, anything that they're near that they can climb. I'm going for a somewhat natural look, so I've decided to use this cork board as a mount. And now that I take a good look at the size of this cork, I think that I am going to mount both of these cryptantha on the same cork mount. And just as a precaution, I am spraying the mount as well as the plant down with an insecticide. So I'm spraying both sides and now I'm just going to leave this here to air dry. And while that's air drying, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my other cryptantha the same way I did this one by removing it from the mount, cleaning it up and preparing it to mount. And again, with this one, you can also see the mother plant and then the offshoot that um, came about after a cutting was taken. A little pest prevention on this one, and now we're ready to get started with the mounting. You could really get creative with what you choose to mount your plant on. I want mine to be kind of natural looking, so I decided to use this cork. It's also what I have on hand. What I'm going to use now is this is a plastic mesh, like a plastic mesh netting. And what I'm trying to do is just use it to form a pocket at the bottom of the mount. I'm going to be putting the roots of the plants in um, sphagnum moss and the pocket is what is going to hold the sphagnum moss in place. I'll put links in the description box to all of the material that I'm using in case you're interested in using some of them to mount your plant. Place of the mesh netting, you could use um, burlap, you could use a wire netting, anything that works for you. Now, one thing I will say is using this plastic mesh and a hot glue gun doesn't go well all the time. You kind of have to let your glue dry a little bit or cool off a little bit before you um, fold the net netting into it or it actually melts the netting. So just something to keep in mind in case you decide to use the same materials that I'm using. But again, it's what I have on hand, so I'm making it work. You want to be sure that the pocket is attached to your mount so that it doesn't fall off when you hang it. And also you want the, the pocket snug enough to hold the planting medium in place with, you know, when you're watering it and stuff like that. You don't want to, you know, water your mount and then all of your planting medium just is washed away. And you can use whatever planting medium you want to use. Um, some people would use an Aroid mix. I'm going to use sphagnum moss. Whatever you want to use is fine as long as the material you're making your pocket out of will hold it. These cryptantha like to be um, somewhat moist. They should never be dried out. You should never let the roots totally dry but you should never leave them soggy either. So that's just another thing you want to keep in mind when deciding how you're gonna water your plant, what you're going to plant the plant in. This is still the backside of my mount. I'm just going through with the glue gun, putting on a gob of glue, letting it cool off a little bit, and then pushing the mesh into it. Make sure that if you're gonna use some kind of glue also that it is not something that is water soluble. You're gonna need it to be able to hold up to water and moisture and all of that kind of stuff over the long term. 
Now it looks like everything is attached so I can turn this over to the front and check the pocket. Yep, that's about it. And this is how it looks. And this is why I like using the mesh because it's not highly visible. You almost don't notice it at all. Now I can go ahead and add the plants to the mount. So since I'm using sphagnum moss, I have some soaking in water in this little flower pot. And this is what I'm going to use to put in the pocket. But instead of putting it in the pocket and then putting the plant in, what I'll do is I'll squeeze out just about all of the water. And then I'm going to form the sphagnum moss around the roots. And the reason I want to do this is I don't want to risk damaging the roots by just taking the bare rooted plant and shoving it down in the net pocket because some of those roots would get snagged on that pocket and break off. So I don't want to break off any more of the roots than necessary. With the sphagnum moss protecting the roots, I can now safely put the plant's roots down into the pocket. With the first plant in place, I follow the same steps with the second plant. And this is what the plants look like securely tucked into the pocket. Notice how the plastic mesh is barely visible. In order to encourage the plant to attach to the mount, it's important to secure the plant to the mount until that happens. So for that, I like to use floral tape. I prefer floral tape because you can secure it tight around the plant without doing any damage to the stem or to the leaves. To secure the plant in place, all I do is take the floral tape around the back of the mount and I'm going to wrap the tape around the plant and the mount without putting the tape over the leaves. Mind you, when you water the plant and everything, the tape will get wet and the wet tape on top of the leaves can cause rot. So what I like to do is make sure that I go behind the leaves so that the tape only comes in contact with the stem. And then I like to tie it off towards the side of the mount. You want to tie it tight enough that the back of the plant is in direct contact with the mount without cutting into the plant. How many ties you need will be dependent on the length of your plant. And once your shingling plant starts attaching to your mount, you'll be able to cut these ties off and discard them. And here's the final result. Both of my shingling plants are here on one mount. I'm happy about that. And if you know me, I like to use my systemic pesticide and I just sprinkled some of it down here in the sphagnum moss to be absorbed by the plant as it takes in water. To water this mounted plant, I just will sit it in a bucket of water or you can hose it down. Um, some people do misting, however I find that for my liking it doesn't get watered enough and I don't want to have to water it every day or anything like that. So I find that totally drenching this and then letting it dry over a couple of days works out just fine for me. I'm really pleased with how this mounting came out. I can't wait until I'm able to remove the ties. But for now, it's just hanging on the, on the end of my plant shelf, getting plenty of warmth, humidity, and light. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you next time. Take care. Stay well. Bye-bye.